Now we have something called the valdez difference. Um, so this is a tubular structure that transports sperms from the epidermis towards the urethra. And I want to show you this structure, it's very important. Now, this is a testis. This is the epidermis, this area. Now, the sperms travel from this area and go up into the vasus difference. This is what causes vasus difference. When it goes through the vasus difference, then if you look here, we have the semivascular. Here's a prostate. It actually comes, travel through the prostate and go through what we call the urethra. So you know that the sperms and the, the, the urine go through the same path. So most of the time what happens is that there is this fluid substance, what I call semen, or sometimes they will call it pre-ejaculation, that actually clear the urethra first before the man ejaculates. Remember, the, 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 the sperms or the testes sit outside the body for a reason, very delicate, cannot be in an acidic area, cannot be too warm. So remember, urine is acidic. So that's why you have the, the, the solution cleaning the urethra before the ejaculations even occur, right? So here is the vasus difference, tube-like structure that transport the sperms from the epidermis towards the urethra um, in preparation to be ejaculated. So these tubes can be clipped during what we call a vasectomy. Now, we said that the sperms, um, Spermogenesis takes place in the testicles. They go into epidermis to be um, mature and then migrate to the vasus difference, right? Now, for a man who, uh, uh, and that is a form of contraceptive too, vasectomy, they will clip these areas so that the sperms cannot transfer up to the vasus difference. So there's a couple of things um, with this is that sometimes it can spontaneously reconnect and so it can father a child. They have to have up at least after the vasectomy. They need to have at least 36 ejaculation before this area can be cleaned from the sperms. So a lot of times people think that okay, I have the vasectomy now, it is clear. I can accept it. They need to use contraceptive. And one of a famous question that people ask: So can a man still ejaculate? Yes, he can still ejaculate. He would just not have any sperms. So that's why I told you early on that individuals mix up sperms with the semen. The semen is a liquid part and then the sperms are the little gamut that swims in it. So yes, he will still have ejaculation, but no sperms will be in the ejaculation. So even when the man comes back to the doctor's office, uh, they will test to see how many sperms is within that semen count and it should be low. This is the coil epidemis. And sometimes what happens is that it can get infected. So this actually stores immature sperms. Sperms take up to three months to be mature, but this is where they stay to get mature. Then they're ejaculated. They transfer or transport in what we call the vasus difference to be ejaculated. So sometimes this area can be inflamed. So, acute bacterial epidemitis. Now you're hearing, so look at this. This is epidemis. Then this is epidemitis. So that tells you that it's an infection. So this is where the bacteria ascend um, through the urethra and it reaches the epidem epidem epidemis. So this causes infection. It's also known as epidemiocorchitis. So the rule, this, once the patient said that they're feeling pain, they should, um, the doctor will try to rule out testicular torsion because it can mimic it. Because remember we said that in this area, this is where you have the vein and artery that is sprung or swing around. And so epidemitis can mimic, uh, I mean, epidemitis can mimic torsion. So you want to make sure one way to test it is to test the um, chromatic reflex. And if it is absent, then it is torsion. If it's not, then it is epidemitis. 
So risk factors include um, sexual active male, younger than 35 years old. They're more likely, if it's a younger person, then it's more likely to be that it's a sexual transmitted disease, such as chlamydia and gonorrhea. If it is a male that is over 35 years of age, then it may be due to E. coli, which we find E. coli in the stool, all right? So there's something called, how would you know? So I, I mentioned two ways. One, you do the chromatic reflex, which is rubbing the hand on in the thigh. Now, normally the testis should draw up to the body, but if it is torsion, it will not, that will be absent. Now, how would you know if it's epidemitis? Do you have something called the pre and sign? Um, relief by pain when the scrotum is elevated. So if you want to find out if this is epidemitis, you elevate the scrotum. And when the scrotum is elevated and if the pain is relief, then it's epidemitis. So the doctor will order labs such as CBC, um, urinalysis, they're looking for blood, they're looking for nitrate, culture, urine, um, they'll tell for gonorrhea and chlamydia. Keep in mind that if it is a male that is younger than 35, it's most likely sexually transmitted disease, gonorrhea and chlamydia. If it is a man that is older than 35, then it's most likely E. coli. 